Hello and welcome to the Dual Screens Crossplay Podcast, where today we're going to be talking about the Xbox and Bethesda Showcase, the PC Gaming Showcase, the Capcom Showcase, and so much more because it's not E3. Andy, how are you doing? Uh, it feels like it's E3, but you said it's not E3. It makes me sad because it's yeah. not E3, like official E3, but you know, I like what's going on. Everyone's doing their own thing. Can't mm-hmm. complain. It's it's way stuff. yeah, it's way more chaotic this year. Like oh, even yeah. than like 2020 or even last year. Like it's just so much more or so much less organized. I was gonna say so much more disorganized. Same thing. Double negative, you know? Um, but it's it's all over the place. Like it's hard to keep track of all of the different like little showcases that all of the places are doing, especially the indie showcases. There's a yeah, lot. It's hard to keep track of every little thing. I feel like I'm always catching announcements after the fact, like, oh, so and so was announced at this thing. And I'm like, what the, well, A, what is that? And B, like, how did I miss this? It's just a byproduct of not having the one event where everyone kind of throws their shit at. So you know you can't miss it if it's all in the same event. But uh yeah. you know, still it's it's what we what we do now, I guess. Yeah. No biggie. Well, we will talk about all of those showcases and so much more on today's episode of the Crossplay Podcast. My name is Taylor Allen, your host and guide across the video game universe, joined by Andy Asimakis. As always, if you like what you're hearing from the Crossplay Podcast, we post each and every week on YouTube, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and any other location that you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts. If you can leave us a review, please do it. It helps us out a ton. And if you want to support us just a little bit more, you can go over to patreon.com slash dual screens. That's D-U-E-L screens. Uh, And for just $1, you can join our amazing Discord. Or if you want to support us even more, like our Patreon producers do, Colton the Apprentice, Nestler, and FNH Paul, that makes it so that we can make awesome shows like our Indies Nuts podcast, uh, or this show, or the dual screens podcast. So many good shows. So many good shows. Two of them are well named. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's this show. I'm just kidding. I love I love the name of the show. I thought it was very clever. <laughs> Let's get to the show. There's a lot Let's... of stuff to talk about yeah, on this we, show. We got a cruise. We have a we have an interview right after this. So if we're like moving through things quick, that's why. Andy, <laughs> tell yes, me Taylor. about your foray in the gaming world, because you and I haven't spoken in a couple of weeks. We haven't, and so this is a weird week because it is uh, Steam Next Fest is going on, and I think it's the worst time for this event to be taking place. Yeah. for There's one reason because, well, there's a lot of great games that I started downloading last night around 8 o'clock-ish. Came home from work. All right, cool. 20 games. Holy shit. We're <laughs> added to my life. And there was just a cursory glance of what yeah. I what looked interesting. Uh-huh. But then as I was downloading some games and, you know, letting them all do their thing, I get an email from one of our good friends at uh, Tinsley PR. Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh, hey, I have a code for this game you asked for like last month. And the game's out in a couple of days. Here's the embargo details. Have at it. And it's a game tailor. Okay. That is so good. So good. It's a game that is so good it made me cry. Oh I shit. Had to, I had to stop what I was doing to start playing it. And that game is TMNT Shredder's Revenge. Oh hell yes. I've got this I, on my doc for games coming out this week. I I can't say a lot about it, but even though I think by the time mm-hmm. this episode goes on YouTube, it's like totally cool. Yeah. Either way, it's all positive stuff regardless, but I was literally in this chair glued to it till about four in the morning last night. Holy shit. And I had tears coming down my face, tears of joy. Yeah. Because it made me so happy. And it was, it's so much more than a nostalgia thing. It's just, it just sent me back to like a really happy place in my life when I was, you yeah. know, your age. <laughs> you you love those like side scrolling kind of beat em up streets it's, of rage style games, right? Yeah, full review up tomorrow on the website. Um, that's I'll be up to four in the morning tonight 
banging that out. But it's when I see a lot, I want to dwell too much on this, but one final point, I see a lot of remakes and reboots and characters and things that I love. Hey, Kujo, things that I love being updated for a modern age. Mm -hmm. And even if I try to critique it, I'm always told, but you know what? It's not really for you. It's for a younger audience, a new demographic. Yeah. The landscape has changed. And I accept that. It's really nice playing this game, knowing that it is in great part, mainly for someone like me. Yeah. That grew up with the a 80s boomer, turtles. Yeah. With the 80s turtles cartoon with the arcade beat em ups. Yeah. I am this game's demographic. Uh-huh. And it's it's a celebration of that. And it's just it's so good it's they got it so right and then some yeah and that's all i really can say because hoof i don't want to pull pull lines from the review but it's it's highly recommended but i'm so happy for you i'm glad that you're loving it it's it's you've been uh playing anything else no that's really it it? (laughs) that's really it i mean uh, soldiers which i've been playing a lot of soldiers lately um, trying to beat that game. Um, that game was actually has an indie news update, which I can cover on our other show. Yeah, uh, I uh, so. I picked that game up. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I'm playing the soldier. Um, yeah, he's it's fun. It's interesting. The, mm. It's not what I thought it was. It's more like Dark Soulsy than it is. I thought it but is it's, Cru- it's crunchy souls like is yeah. what they describe it as, which is very. I love that description. Yep. But yeah, it's, it, it's a fun little Metroidvania. It's a mm-hmm. Metroid ass Metroidvania game. It's got great sprites, good shit, good soundtrack. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad you picked it up. I'm not very far in. I've only beat like two bosses or something like right. that, but um, it's it's cool. Uh, you're, spiders you're are very m- creepy. Much further along than Matt. Really? Who's had the game for probably four times as long as you've had it for. I. <laughs> he, everything that he's saying about the archer sounds interesting, but it also yeah. sounds like it also is kind of like hard mode. You know, I don't know. I've been seeing stuff on the forums that the archer is one of the easier classes to pick up. So I don't know what's going on there. Mm-hmm. I have to. I, I gotta do a fact check. I gotta do my sure. own research. Yeah, but we'll see. Yeah. So besides that, what else are you been playing? Uh, I've gone back to my chicken soup for the soul, uh, which is Octopath Traveler. Um, <laughs> I, I just really? I love this game so oh, much. Man. Yeah, it, it's just beautiful. Um, and every six months, I just like get in a mood to like go and and play through it again and play with a different combination of teams and jobs and stuff and it just it's so fucking good i i adore that game i haven't even picked up triangle strategy yet i was Uh, wondering if like that's like the next that's the next step that's the evolution of that pokemon you go to that one afterward yeah i'm i'm thinking about it i don't know man i don't know and the reason that that i'm not good the reason that i'm not just pulling the trigger is because of what I've been spending the majority of my time on. Uh, welcome to an even nerdier show within our show for nerds. Taylor learns how to DM Dungeons and Dragons. Um, oh no, I'm going to put you in a padded cell. The, the long and, do do the long and short. <laughs> the long and short here. Um, last week I went on a tirade about how I wasted a lot of money buying Star Citizen and it just not working. Right? Uh <laughs> You know, I know this could be a whole other show, but I feel like you like to invest in things that don't pan yeah, out. For well, survival games in general, and then now Star Citizen. Let me let me tell you, Andy. It's my personality, okay? Um, so <laughs> I'm campaigning, uh, uh, or I'm DMing a campaign for some of our friends. Steve's playing in it, um, mm-hmm. Matt, uh, and a couple other friends. Um, and it's my very first time being a DM, so I'm like, all right, I need some stuff like i need some virtual stuff to be able to like make this so i bought a six month subscription to dnd beyond because that's like the go-to place for dnd stuff right come to find out you then also have to buy all the fucking books and everything and 60 bucks a piece so i'm like fuck that (laughs) so i'm I'm out 30 bucks whatever uh, whatever then i'm like yeah i'm like you know i need to um get like a map making software and i start using this software called incarnate um that's free um but then they have all this really cool like texture stuff that's like fucking awesome in their premium pack and like additional little stamps and stuff that you can put on the maps and i was like you know what? i need that 
fuck it. Six bucks a month. Yeah, I'll pay for it. <laughs> so I, I I bought it and I that one I'm actually very happy with. I use it a ton already but and we haven't even started yet and i'm like all right mm-hmm. now i actually need somewhere for us to play and host so i'm looking at world anvil which i see ads for all the time uh they have really cool like um world building software i think it's mostly used by like authors um to like write um like fantasy worlds and stuff so i'm using that i'm like okay this is perfect i'll use it um by the month subscription 13 bucks then I go and do a test session. It doesn't do any of the shit that I want to do. So I'm pissed. Then I buy this virtual tabletop. It's 50 bucks, but it's a lifetime thing. So I'm like, sweet, this is perfect. Now mm-hmm. I have to pay for a fucking uh, server to host it on at eight bucks a month. I'm just like, I'm I'm going broke out here. What were you suckered into doing? I don't know, dude. I don't fucking know. <laughs> what? This is so ridiculous. I know nothing. I'm just trying to figure this shit out. And oh, like, they found the perfect sap. <laughs> all, all of this software is like halfway good enough. It sold you on a dream, like Taylor. Three more oh, things. you could be the DM and like you get to own everything and you could you mm-hmm. control the whole world is and what what happens where. You have all this power. You're like this yeah. sounds like this sounds great. Yeah, but we don't yeah. want to do this. Well, it, <laughs> it's still very fun. I'm having a blast. Creating I'm sure. Stuff, I, yeah, but... I mean, listen, it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, but you know. Yeah. Yeah, uh, games to buy also, dude. It's... Yeah, my my final adventure in gaming is games that I have to buy that I haven't yet. I've had my eye on the quarry since we talked about it last week. I watch a trailer like every other day about for this game. It yeah. looks fucking great. That's that's coming down the pipeline soon. I feel for yeah. me because I, I loved Until Dawn. Mm-hmm. Me and too. This has David Arquette, so you really yeah, you really I... can't go wrong with that combination of things. I think I want to uh, just spend a weekend, right? Get it, me and my wife, spend a weekend, play through it together. Because we yep. did that with Until Dawn. Got pizza, hung out until like three in the morning. It was oh, awesome. so cute. It was so much fun. So I think that's we're going to do that one of these yeah. weekends coming up. All right. Do you hear that, Andy? What was that? I heard Kick. it. Oh, it's a release roundup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Is that a thing? Yes. Uh, <laughs> so, news as of yesterday, oh, uh, no. Resident Evil 2 Remake, 3 Remake, <laughs> and Village just got next-gen upgrades. Those are out mm-hmm. now. Um, Lumber Jack is out for the Xbox Family of Systems, the Switch, and PC. It's out today. Neon White is out on Switch and PC on the 16th. Red Out 2 is coming out everywhere on the 16th. Starship Troopers, Terran Command is coming out on PC on the 16th. And TMNT Shredder's Revenge, a.k.a. Andy's Game of the Year, is coming out on last-gen consoles, Switch, and PC on the 16th. I need, like, a legend to go through these little codes you put on the document. Yeah. N-G-U-X-F-S-P-C. I was like, what, what N- language is yeah. this? I, I understand it. Sure Basically, you do. as I'm reading through the Game Informer article, I just type out the platform that it's coming to in abbreviation and smash it all together. Like, right, NGU right, right. is next-gen upgrade. Yeah, and no, I, I totally get it as you were saying yeah. it, but I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. E is for everyone. E is for everywhere. E is for yeah. everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. It's ridiculous. But, all right. Dual screens report, Andy. We've got a chunky one today. It's a lot chunky. of news. Because we had a lot of showcases. Oh First and God. foremost, let's talk about Ubisoft. Ubisoft came out and stated that Assassin's Creed Valhalla's future is going to be announced in a September showcase. They also showed off the final, or I'm sorry, the Assassin's Creed franchise's future September co- showcase. AC Valhalla is getting their final DLC, and it's including a roguelite mode. How mm. interested are you? You know, uh, this is like one of the last IPs I would have guessed would have had would have gone rogue anything. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, AC has always it's been veering away towards what Assassin's Creed was. Mm-hmm. So this seems like a natural progression. It's also like it's what's popular nowadays. So why the hell not? Sure. Um, I am more curious as to how Ken, my fiance, who loves Assassin's Creed, is going to react to this sort of gameplay change. Yeah. Because I think he's so used to the third person action game and he's not much of a hardcore gamer, but he mm-hmm. plays it 
very hardcore because he loves the franchise. But the idea of a rogue anything in Assassin's Creed with how it he he dies a lot and the idea of losing things. I don't know how it's going to sit with him. So that's high comedy for me when, when, when that happens. Yeah. But yeah, bring it on. I, I like when we do fun, different shit with existing IP. I yeah. actually do it. Okay. Uh, I also love that this announcement came out like the day of the new PS Plus program. Mm-hmm. Because AC Valhalla is like a, a big featured yeah. title in there. And so I think this will build some excitement. I think this will draw a lot of people to the PlayStation Marketplace and we'll just pick up the DLC. Um, so I, I think this is awesome. Um, speaking of open world RPGs, a long time industry standard, famous for games such as Call of Duty Modern Warfare 4, <laughs> Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, twice, Call of Duty Ghosts. Two twice. <laughs> yes, two of them. Uh, has some job postings on their site alluding to them making an open world RPG. What in the world is going on at Activision? Hey, can we just cut and paste my response in the last segment? I like it when companies do different <laughs> things with, with existing IP. Um, yeah, this is wild stuff, yeah. dude. I like Infinity Ward hasn't made anything other than Call of Duty in 15 years. Like they they made like Call of Duty 2. Mm-hmm. Like World War II era Call of Duty. I I'm shocked. Listen, um, one of my favorite games mm-hmm. on the PlayStation 1 is a little game called Omega Boost, which mm-hmm. was made by a company called Polyphony Digital, which has only done Gran Turismo games sure. forever. Mm-hmm. And I've always loved it when a developer who is known for one thing specifically, very specifically, does like a complete 180 and says, yeah. you know what? It's like the idea of the Horizon, the Forza guys doing like a Fable game. Yeah, I I was going to say, there's a lot of really good examples of that happening right right now. Um, It's that. Playground Games doing uh, Forza Horizon. Uh, Mm -hmm. The team at Sony San Diego, who Mm -hmm. only makes MLB The Show. MLB. Mm -hmm. They're currently working on a AAA third-person action game. Mm -hmm. Um, What was the other big one? Oh, uh, Horizon with Gorilla. Yeah, they were just doing, you yeah. know, um, kill zone so, games. So I think there's um, a lot of success recently with these mm-hmm. developers, like getting mm-hmm. to stretch their creative wings a little bit. Oh, right. the, the other big one I was thinking of was Respawn doing um, oh, yeah. the Star Wars game. So like it, it's been happening a lot more lately and they've been really successful, like really fucking cool games that have actually been released so far. Uh, yeah it's just like i could imagine being in that position you're making the same thing over and over again mm-hmm. you know, with some minor tweaks and changes but in the back of your brain what if i did like a space colony sim type adventure game yeah but you, but you can't work on it just yet it's all just building and fermenting in the back of your brain and then it's like you know what guys fuck it do a whole different kind of game with different kind of genre yeah and all that is spilling out that yeah. shit's exciting and so I, please, I think yes, do this. The the success of Horizon um, is like good news for these developers, and I mm-hmm. think especially like with how well um, globally Elden Ring has done this year, I think it's giving some of these big publishers a little bit more confidence to go and try something new. Oh yeah, I'm sure. It, it, I'm sure it's all their in their presentation, like their um, powerpoints. Like mm-hmm. here, here's Elden Ring sales. And they're like, yeah. okay, green light. <laughs> Elden Ring outsold Call of Duty, therefore we make Elden Ring now. <laughs> right. Oh, good like, lord! I didn't even think about that analogy. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah, but I'm I'm excited. <laughs> um, the the team at Infinity Ward is incredibly talented. Like they are they? I don't know which one does what anymore over there. Who does yeah. which Call of Duty? Who does the good, the bad, or the yeah. ugly? I for, don't know anymore. <laughs> for how like pigeonholed they've been into making call of duty games um mm-hmm. their shit looks really pretty so mm-hmm. um i'm i'm excited to see what comes of this eventually if it ever comes out um speaking of games that eventually might come out eventually 
um, Kojima did an interview um, where, of course, he was asked about his relationship with Sony um, mm -hmm. on the heels of the recent announcement of uh, Microsoft funding his next, pro mm -hmm. next project. Mm -hmm. um, he made it very clear that he still has a great relationship with Sony and is indeed making a video game for Microsoft. It's not an experience. Mm -hmm. It's not a, a VR thing. <laughs> Which, not like a, a ten yeah. minute tech demo of some kind. Yeah. So i i want to I want to know yeah. of all of the things that Kojima could do, all the crazy off the wall shit. What do you think he's going to be doing with Microsoft? You know, that's a really great question, Taylor. Because when he was talking about this game announcement or this non game announcement of a non actual realized game yet at yeah. the Microsoft conference. He was like, it's something I've always wanted to do. And it makes me wonder what barrier existed technologically mm -hmm. that was preventing you from having this idea developed. Because I'm pretty sure when he went on his own and he conceived Death Stranding, mm -hmm. that would have been something of a game he always wanted to do. Yeah. I, I would hope. So I don't know. It's like, when you have a game like Death Stranding, which when you break it down is a game about a guy delivering packages and roughing the terrain that is the world around him that's been destroyed. It's, pre it's a pretty unique idea unto itself. And I'm wondering what else is left in the gaming space of what hasn't been done versus what, what, what Kojima hasn't done. What, what lies in that space? So... Yeah. It's, it's, listen, I think Kojima is a very, you know, he's a, he's a treasure. I think we need someone like him to exist that has these big ideas and that people will give money to carte blanche. Like, here's a blank check. Do what you want to do. Your name alone is going to sell this product. Yeah. And he can be as insane as he wants to be. And something is going to happen. It can be polarizing and divisive, but it's going to be something interesting that we'll all talk about at even, some point. Even if the game isn't good, like mm. you can make an argument that death stranding was not a good game. Right. I, I could I like listen. I, as someone who loved that game, it's in one of my top games of all time. I can, mm -hmm. I can tell someone why you won't like this game. Yeah. Like it, there are plenty of mechanics that he embraces and that he leans mm -hmm. into and his writing style. And like, Oh, all God. of that <laughs> that you can point yeah, to and be like, and the, it's not a good game and yet they always sell gangbusters right the fame the fame whoring he tends yeah. to do more yeah. so than lately is sure that i think that's what i'm most excited for like what kind of star power are you going to get microsoft to pay for in your next mm -hmm. game i thought you were going to go down the road and say that what has held kojima back in the past answer being konami oh, and it yeah. was going to be you know Quiet Mountain or whatever. Listen, like Steven listen. Joked about. <laughs> yeah, listen. Him and Konami, we know for a fact that he wanted to leave Metal Gear Solid after the second game. Yeah. He was like, I've done two of these, two of the more recent ones. Huge success. Part two had a very meta message to it, like to leave it to like the future and move mm -hmm. on. But the dude got like death threats to like make more games. So he had to come back and make three fucking more. Well, four actually, if you count Peace Walker. So yeah. yeah, he just, he was again, like our friends at Infinity Ward and Guerrilla Games. When you're pigeonholed for a long time and you break free of those shackles, fun shit can happen. All right, let's talk about uh, game showcase stuff. PC let's. gaming showcase, Capcom showcase. Um, were interesting you have notes here that there were both messes here here's the thing what they showed at the pc gaming showcase i felt huh. like was actually pretty interesting okay. um the the thing they ended with that like huge ass mod for half life alex looked really interesting mm -hmm. um there were a lot of cool indie games stuff coming out of early access things like that that i thought were great that showcase did not need to be two hours long the the writing and stuff that they do is just so over the top and cringy like i can't stand it <laughs> it's it's a lot the stuff that they actually showed was cool 
But they could have condensed that show down to an hour and it would have been awesome. This is like, you know, are we really missing E3? Because this the mm-hmm. PC gaming show is always a staple of E3 and it's always in this kind of format and it's always has these cringy dad jokes of it. And mm-hmm. you're, you're left wondering who are you writing this for? Who is supposed to laugh at these jokes? Yeah, and they have this weird, like, so God bless ongoing <laughs> storyline that there was this robot that the fucking wait. There's killed. like PC gaming show lore. Yeah, dude. <laughs> like what the, the fuck? they they were talking about a multiverse in the beginning. Oh how, no! Yeah, no, it, it, stop, it was it. a lot, man. Um, <laughs> we're into the ground. Yeah, but they <laughs> they showed they showed some cool stuff. Um, I was really excited um about agent 40 or 64 mm. uh that's the very much not golden eye but definitely golden eye game uh um, right. they showed new <laughs> gameplay for that and it looks awesome hey we also got a premiere of a former friend of the dual screens podcast the invincible showed oh. off showed off some shit that like space exploration looking game that was mm-hmm. sci-fi, sci-fi horror goodness yeah that one Lo- looks loving, really good. Loving all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they also showed uh, a very much me game, Nitro Kid, which is a God, cyberpunk is kung fu deck like rogue builder or God. deck building roguelike. <laughs> that was a I'm lot gonna, of I'm fucking. I'm gonna start keywords. calling you Nitro Kid from now on. This Nitro is Kid. Perp- yeah, it's you. Uh, it, it looked really good. That was right up my fucking alley. Um, <laughs> but yeah, overall, the stuff they showed was cool. The writing was awful. It was so bad. <laughs> it was so bad, man. Well, how was Capcom a mess? Uh, Capcom, I, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit on the Capcom side of things. I just feel like they didn't need a show. Yes, you I know? think that's the better point, the necessity of it. Because yeah. I was, I, I, I caught glimpses of it. I was skimming through the whole thing. And it wasn't... Um, you know, had they had it announced the RE4 remake mm-hmm. at the PlayStation Showcase a few weeks back, the state of play, um, this was all just kind of fluff. Yeah, like it's things that we knew were in the pipeline. They also they the did like DLC. a huge thing on the on the Sunbreak DLC, and we yeah. have seen that so many times already. We I have. feel like this is the third or fourth like big showcase of Sunbreak. Like it just it was a lot. Um that like fighting collection thing that they showed sure. seemed okay, but like whatever. Exo Primal, that gameplay oh uh, yeah reveal that they did was yeah, that's not a showstopper though. That's no, not a, that's not showcase worthy, I feel yeah. I it was very cool to see the giant horde of velociraptors come spilling out onto that big like suspension bridge that they had there though. <laughs> like yeah, this that ca- game this... is goofy as fuck. This showcase felt like what Capcom left out of the PlayStation State of Play, which we already showed Street Fighter VI and RE4 Remake. What else is in the pipeline that we haven't shown yet that we want to, you know, get some promotion on, some eyes on? It's, mm-hmm. it's showcase season. Here you go. All the RE7 Remake update stuff, like RE2, uh, 37 updates, next-gen stuff. Yeah. RE8 DLC, which actually looked pretty good. Mm-hmm. Not gonna lie, I'm actually very intrigued by that. Yeah, because it's. But did you did you play RE8? I did. Yeah, that's okay. the only one that I played. Okay. Um, so but, it's interesting. You're yeah. playing as the daughter of the main character, which is all grown up, mm-hmm. and it's third person perspective, which isn't not what these games are known for. At least the seven and eight of the of RE franchise. Yeah. Plus, we got RE8 full game in third person view. Mm-hmm which is behind the paywall. Which is, I think it's kind of scummy to do that, but whatever Capcom you do, you do you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one of the best parts of that showcase, I feel, was when they announced the extra characters for mercenary mode for RE8. And they were like, <laughs> play in the nine foot, like tall, mm-hmm. you know, vampire lady. You, like, like, oh you can God. play as big booba vampire lady. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone lost their shit. As you look <laughs> down your enemies. Yeah. Oh my god, I lost my shit. Yeah, well, that was that was that was fun. But yeah, necessary. Eh, this could have been a tweet. Yeah. I feel. I I also tweet think that they very easily could have partnered with some of the bigger publishers and just sprinkled this right. in over the next couple of months. Yeah. Right. 
and had yeah. that be a part of Sony's, uh, you know, big yeah. showcase that they do and Microsoft showcase and, and stuff like that. It, this didn't have to be its own thing. Yeah. Isn't that like, doesn't that cost more to produce on your own? Like, I feel like it does. I don't know. I would feel like, oh, there's a PlayStation one. There's a Microsoft one. There's a uh-huh. summer of gaming thing happening. Here's some assets, guys. Just yeah. put, them where, put them where you feel. I'm sure Keeley would have loved something more interesting than oh, sure fifth sci-fi horror game for the showcase. Yo, shut the fuck up. <laughs> All right. Shut the fuck up. My horror is getting a lot of love lately. Let's get into the, the... the gods above or below are listening to me. <laughs> Topic of the show. Oh, my God. You have a bold statement, and I could not disagree with you more with this. Really? This I really could not disagree with you. More. I so my topic of the show. You have not you have not lived long I've, enough to make a, way that to make a statement it. like that. <laughs> I've been Ed. following this shit for as like Ed. No, just say it. Xbox say it. the Xbox and Bethesda showcase is the best showcase we've seen in years. I, I do not agree with that at all. I I just don't understand why not. Let's talk about it. Let's 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 talk, let's, let's talk about yeah. it. Let's, talk let's about do a it. quick let's, recap because I feel like there's a lot of really good bits. There's a lot that came out give of here. Some, give me some highlights. They opened the show with Redfall, um, which mm. recently got delayed alongside Starfield to early 2023. Mm. Mm. Um, this looks like an arcane ass game, man, uh, and it, it looks pretty good. I'm I'm interested in this. Mm. Uh, the gameplay looks fun. We were commenting. Um, the AI looked a little funky, and I don't know if it was just the build that they were working on, um, where it's not finalized. But like the enemy AI looked very dumb. Like they did looked you, like zombies. Did you not, guys comment on the writing in that? That uh, was I was not into that. I don't like that writing style. It's like I don't know. I dug it. I I thought it was yeah. interesting. I think it, st- kind it of... started off strong, and then it went into like weird, yeah, cringy territory. I was like, okay, I'm I, over this. I think they're trying to like lean in a little bit to the like Stranger Things vibes. Oh yeah, kinda, I totally get. You know? I totally get that a hundred percent. But again, I'm just like, mm-hmm. nah. I love the idea though. Left for Dead vampires. I'm into it. Yeah, hundred percent into that idea. Though the game director did come out and say. I don't want you guys to think of this as Left 4 Dead vampires, which well, it's really hard not. To... <laughs> it's like okay, convince me otherwise. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they then moved into Hollow Knight Silk Song. Awesome, mm. looks amazing. Game is beautiful. See, this is this is why this is your best showcase. You, you saw Hollow Knight Silk Song. I I, I knew right away. I, this game made it. it for game, you. That game's fucking awesome. Because the um, game we saw it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the next game they showed, I kind of poo pooed in our live reactions, but that's just because I'm not into like Justin Roiland's comedy at all. Uh, uh-huh. High on Life, where the guns talk to you and they sound like Rick and Morty characters. Uh, no, just not nah. for me. I, Steve, I'm with, I'm Steve with and Matt one. were very excited about it. They thought well, it. I don't hilarious. get it. Again, not all things yeah. are for me and you, Taylor. It's that's how it is. Yeah, you know, it's how it is. I, I understand people like it. I think one sure. of the most underrated announcements here that, again, is not for me, but is going to draw in a huge audience to Game Pass was the partnership with Riot Games. That was massive. The fact that you can That's, get every champion yeah. in League of Legends, every agent in Valorant, uh, you get a bunch of stuff in like Legends of Runeterra and Teamfight Tactics. Um, That's nuts. And I think that's going to yeah. cause a lot of like PC only players to consider subscribing to Game Pass more. I just realized one one thing, Taylor. You're yeah. going to get to it. So there's one other game in the showcase that I had the aha. That's why Taylor loved this showcase so much. And I'm sure you're going to mention it at some point. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll get to it. You um, need, I think you know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, so it starts with a G. Starts with a G. You'll, 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 oh, you'll we'll get, get to it. it. We'll get to you'll, it. You'll, you'll uh, get to it. <laughs> Plague Tale Requiem. Oh, we saw new gameplay there looks awesome looks like a even darker version of the first game somehow like very violent mm. um i like that um i forget what the main character that girl's name is um but i like how so mad they came with fucking dope as shit yeah, how aggressive she is in this like yeah she very much has like a, a fuck fucking, these guys vibe, i love the rat- I love it fucking the rats of us too i fucking love it yeah yeah <laughs> um 
but that that game's going to be incredible. That comes oh, out yeah. later this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Forza Motorsport, um, big showcase of that. Um, I, I'm not a racing sim guy, so whatever. It looked pretty. Uh, yeah. Flight Simulator, they announced the 40th anniversary uh, update that adds a ton of stuff to it. A bunch of new um, helicopters and gliders and um, Halo fucking shit. Pelican from Halo. <laughs> <laughs> bunch of stuff yeah uh, we saw some overwatch 2 gameplay that's whatever i don't care um <laughs> yo that's free to play uh, apparently that's, that's, that's free to play. Uh, that's, that, I, don't, I don't get that decision yeah. it makes you wonder like is this like as little as possible work went into making this oh 100 percent 100 percent is exactly that what's what going on yes <laughs> okay. without a doubt Okay. Without a doubt. The fact that you're going to be able to play every single map and every single character that they release in Overwatch 2 in Overwatch 1 and cross play with people who are in Overwatch 2 should tell you all that, that you need to know about this game. That answers my question. They're, they're trying to hype up, upselling you they want a them, story them, mode. Basically. Loot boxes. Yo, they didn't show that. Which Not I, at all. I, I'm into that. I'm yeah. into the PvE part of Overwatch 2. Because like, I love Overwatch 1. I was a huge fan, but you know, after a while, I kind of like, okay, I can't, I can't keep playing it forever for loot boxes and experience and leveling up. And I just can't because mm-hmm. I have to walk away because I have other shit to play. Yeah. But a story mode with like PVE, like uh, that's interesting. Cause that, that, that has a finite. It's like start, finish, boom, yeah. done. I can walk away, book closed. Show me that. Yeah. Where is that? They've, um, They've done things like that in the past too. They've had like limited events where you team up with a team of four and it's kind of left for dead style. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a bunch of like AI enemies chasing after you while you protect a point or moving through a set of Ooh. corridors and stuff. And they're pretty fun. So I, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's fun, but I'm optimistic about it. I'm frustrated that they didn't show any of that stuff. Yeah, was, watch them, watch them charge for story mode. Yeah. <laughs> That's well, what they're going to charge for. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Next, Ara History Untold. Um, this is the like Civ like game, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. made by Microsoft First Party. Uh, mm-hmm. that looked really cool. I'm definitely gonna pick this up. I I really enjoy the Civ games, so I play them kind of casually. Um, I'm interested in this to see, um, you know, kind of their unique take on it. We didn't see enough, um, like gameplay and stuff mm-hmm. to see how different it is it was more of just like an announcement cinematic oh wait but... that was like a cinematic trailer i did see yeah. that yeah which i would wish we would just evolve past that point that you know yeah but you know, overall it, it seems cool it seems really interesting you know no one told you to do a two-hour show you can cut a cinematic trailer and make the show shorter yeah exactly that's, that's just my take on it <laughs> it was only 95 minutes andy Come on. oh true oh wow <laughs> they came out ahead of time and told us it would be 95 minutes and they did right. not lie um <laughs> <laughs> Latest expansion for Elder Scrolls Online, High Isle, that comes mm-hmm. out this week, I think, or next week. Okay. Um, if you're into that game, sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, Fallout 76 is getting a pretty big expansion called The Pit. Um, I'm going to be honest, after going back and rewatching this, I think I'm kind of into it. I, this might be what gets this me is gonna, to This is going to burn you like every Fallout other 76. similar... It's going to burn you. I don't think it will. Because <laughs> I have Game Pass, so it's like such a well, low that's, barrier to entry, you know? That's the whole point of this. Like, yeah. this is, there's no risk. Yeah. I don't know. I, I haven't, like, checked out the last couple of DLCs, and apparently since they've added, like, NPCs and stuff into the game, mm-hmm. it's gotten better. So I'm cautiously optimistic about this. I, I think I'm into it. Mm-hmm. Um, in one of my favorite crossovers of the year, Forza Horizon 5 DLC partnered with Hot Wheels. Yo. And I'm Hot very Wheels. excited about this. Hot Wheels tracks going through mountainscapes? Yeah, dude. It looks so Yo. good. And Steve, <laughs> in our reaction, Steve nailed it. The The team at Xbox got sick of seeing all of the like trick courses uh, mm. in Grand Theft Auto. So like, okay, we just have to add that mechanic into the game. How do we do it? <laughs> fucking Hot Wheels tracks. Fucking Hot Wheels. Yeah, fucking Hot Wheels. Do so Let's do it. Uh, it it looks fantastic. I'm very very excited yeah. to jump into this. Um, one of my favorite things they showed all day actually. Um, <laughs> wow. <next. laughs> I 
I love that game. Like Forza Horizon. No, 5 I know is you do. Awesome. I know you do. Good. Know. I'm I'm excited. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, next thing they showed. I have learned my lesson on this. I'm not gonna buy this game. Uh, Arc two. <laughs> not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. Because here's here's the thing. I found the survival game that's done it for me. You, you know? can't. You can Yeah. The next no, the V Rising two. That's the next game you're gonna buy. That's the V survival. Rising two Vampire Boogaloo. You I will buy. It. Um, they showed off more Vin Diesel. Uh, they really know. can't help themselves, can no, they? No, they can't. You know, they really can't. Maybe that's why Kojima is doing a game. We can give you Keanu Reeves. Yeah, who do you want, Kojima? Who do you want? <laughs> You want me to go get Clint Eastwood? Yeah. I bet he would love that. He would, he would nerd <laughs> out over that. Uh, apparently, the game director for Arc 2 said that it's going to have Dark Souls-like combat. That... Show me. Show it to yeah. me. Cinematic trailer. <laughs> Does that interest you at all? Show it to me. I, I, I don't know. I see it. They didn't really show any of the game, did they? It was an in-game, an in-game. No, it was, all, it was like all cinematic. It was, yeah, so it was fucking dumb. Yeah, I, you, and I can, you know, when you announce something, sure. But we've seen mm-hmm. this game; it's been announced before. And it's been a year ish. Yeah. Now you're coming back with another CG trailer. All uh, right. The next two games that we saw, um. Both looked good. One, definitely not for me. Scorn, new gameplay and release date trailer. That's coming out this October. Oh boy, the ice light up. This is an Andy game. A uh, game looks spoopy oh as fuck. Oh boy, I love fleshy things. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm like the anti-military FPS game. Mm-hmm. So anything FPS that isn't involve someone in the military or like traditional guns. Mm-hmm. I'm all fucking for it. Yeah. And this is like uh, the fact that you're like ripping shit. off chunks yes. of flesh to like heal yourself and reload your gun. I just, uh, yeah. it makes me yeah. squeamish. Yeah. So uh, you oh, can enjoy this one. Yeah. <laughs> I will enjoy the next one Flintlock. This Dude. game, this might be the like most unexpected awesome thing that I have seen in all of the showcases. Flintlock looks incredible it like the animations the like jump and ground slam the cool like melee combat and stuff I badass just... looking chick protagonist like i'm i'm into all of it dude I'm i was so, so glad into it. i was so glad it wasn't greedfall too <laughs> i i said that I at ha- the beginning I had, of our reacts. i had a moment <laughs> yeah. i was like at the beginning of our reacts, because it kind of has the, set in the same era, you know. It has the same weapons, aesthetic, right? But then I saw like the jumping animations and the combat animations. I was like, no, no, Spider cannot make animations as smooth. It's impossible for them. You never so, know. I so take all that Greedfall one money to make a better Greedfall two. Could what, happen. <laughs> what Greedfall one money? They've given away for free on every platform it's ever been released on. Because they made so much money, Taylor. You oh, know what? They, sure. they don't. It's do you want to? It's not greedy fall. You know, it's like oh, all right, guys. Yeah. No, that makes we, sense. We we made too much. They're, Just take it. Just they're take socialist it. game developers. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Flintlock looks fucking awesome. I'm I'm stoked about that. Yes, yes, yes. Um, hundred <laughs> percent. Next, another new project out of Mojang and the Minecraft team. Minecraft Leg- Legends. Uh, you know, coming out in 2023. We were just talking about people doing different shit with their ip Mm -hmm. this oddly had me as i was watching it it seems interesting (laughs) right it's like yeah if they combine like dragon quest builders and like pikmin almost it's kind of the vibe i was getting i don't want to be all these little minions and stuff right like there are a few things that i care a little about in this world yeah one being like the female anatomy zero interest (laughs) at all in those parts top and bottom and also minecraft yeah but watching this i was like okay yeah i, I could fuck with this i, I sh- literally could fuck with this i showed my son the trailer mm-hmm. and he he's four and a half he freaked mm-hmm. the fuck out because he is obsessed with minecraft right now he doesn't yeah. even play minecraft he likes watching no, videos he about likes minecraft. it's the idea of minecraft yeah and so as soon as I showed him, he said, Daddy, can we play this game right now? This is going <laughs> to give me more videos to watch, yeah. Daddy. Yeah. So I'll probably play this with him when it comes out next year. Right. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, next up, No Man's Sky Farming Simulator. Uh, this is Lightyear <laughs> Frontier. A lot of No Man's Sky in this showcase. We'll yeah. Get to that later, by the way, <laughs> Lightyear no, this Frontier. Is, this was dope. This was dope. I like this one. Uh, it's not for me. It's not, not a for me you. Game. Again, but... it's not a it's not a me game either. But the idea, like this Titanfall ish, mm-hmm. like Stardew Valley looking situation, where yeah, like, you're totally, doing, you're doing all your shit from your mech is interesting i liked the watering mechanic too where you had yeah, like yeah. basically a fire hose that you were just like yeah. spraying out of your cannon yeah um, i don't know <laughs> it, it's on game pass i'll probably uh pick it up and yeah. try it out a little of, bit of, yeah of course you can you're totally able to do that because yeah. it's game pass speaking of things that you should check out gunfire reborn got a this console the, launch announcement i love game with, this game this is the game with the g i was telling you about gotcha, this is gotcha, the one gotcha. i i've put on steam like 140 hours into gunfire reborn yeah it's I a know. really good game i uh, know so hi- <laughs> highly I'll... recommend definitely and, check it out when it comes and out i was like it. oh this is why he has a massive boner for the showcase oh, it's like fucking I, hollow this, knight and then yeah. like gunfire reborn <laughs> this was just like a, a cool addition <laughs> i think right 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 um it's an interesting 2d horror metroidvania platformer thing um the last case of benedict fox this seems interesting very stylish kind of eldritch horror like dude i'm I'm into it fucking low crafty and metroidvania yeah sign me up that looks sick it seems interesting yes Um, i'll I'll definitely try it out Mm -hmm. it i'm not like crazy hyped about it but it's one of those games that like seeing it i'm like yeah but those are all words that I'm in. I'm into, so I'll I'll do it. You know, I like all those buzzwords. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll try it. Yeah, um, speaking my language. One of maybe the most unique games of the showcase as Dusk Falls. That was the one with the mm. weird, like, kind of comic book animation and real time anima- animation. So you were seeing, oh like, yeah, the truck didn't, like actually drive, I, but when characters move, it was like. I didn't care for this. I I didn't like the animation on it. The story weird like teleporting animation. (laughs) The story and the concept seem interesting, and the fact Mm -hmm. it sounds like it's kind of like Jackbox Party Pack, where everyone can kind of like connect with their phones and vote on the decisions that you make. Um, That seems interesting. I I think it might be worth checking out. The animation is a little jarring. Steve and Matt were into it. I was like, kind of yeah. yeah. I just feel like I have life is strange for games like this that i go to um yeah this the animation was very off-putting i was like eh, yeah yeah just let's get past this yeah i wasn't into it <laughs> yeah. um naraka blade point which has been out in early access for a little while oh yeah uh, yeah mm-hmm. that's at like feudalist japan um mm-hmm. uh fighting game uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, battle mm-hmm. royale game Something sure. like that. I don't know. They say them buzzwords again. So, something like that. I I checked this out once. I got a code from the developer when it was in alpha, and it ran so poorly on my PC that I you asked actually to give play you money. the game. Yeah, <laughs> like I, it was bad. Whatever this costs, so, pay me. Uh, I don't know. Seems interesting, cool, like melee combat, um, battle royale looking thing. So, um, coming to console too. So that's cool. Um, let's see. What did we have next? We got left? <laughs> uh, a handful, just a couple. Uh, Grounded yeah. is coming out 1.0. Woo! This year. Very excited about that. The story looks silly. I'm not going to play it. Um, <laughs> Araban. This game looked fucking insane. Oh. Which one was this again? That was Remind the one me? where you like move through the shadows. Oh, yes. That it was like Assassin's Creed robot shit. So cool. Yeah, it was like vintage, like... Mm-hmm assassin's creed style gameplay yeah and it, it had like, like a sci-fi world yeah, oh, yeah. and it had like that a really cool. interesting like cell shaded cool. yeah. um animation mm-hmm. style you kind of like have to hide in the shadow and you have like environmental stuff that's moving and you have to move with the shadow and stuff mm-hmm. it yeah it looks awesome i'm way into this um i was so so rock hard while they were showing off the diablo 4 stuff andy 
<laughs> my god it just they're saying all the right things it's going to be open world non-linear progression yeah. they talked about like world bosses they talked about saving a town and then townspeople actually come and populate it and you have like merchants and stuff there like it, this seems like a yeah, fantastic it's, evolution of it's, the ARPG genre. It's what I wanted Diablo 3 to be. When I when I was watching yeah. this, I was like, this is what the next game should have been. But again, it took Diablo 3's failures to get us to this point. So yep. however bad that was, it served the purpose. And now we have a much better game, a better sequel on the horizon that looks looks fucking gorgeous, dude. That is that yeah. is a sexy ass looking game. That is mm-hmm. high, high polish. And I cannot wait to the animations on the attacks and stuff too look mm-hmm. incredible. They kept showing mm-hmm. off that um uh like blood wave attack and that looked so mm-hmm. good. It looked like moist and and Ooh, full of like that. the best bits and stuff, that. you know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was into it. I'm so excited for this game. Uh Sea of Thieves season 7. Cool. Shit, is it that many seasons? Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. That game's been out for a while, man. Um but that's more Sea of Thieves people are into it okay. uh ravenlock uh they showed off and ravenlock looks very cool um mm. rpg like kind of looked like a platformer a little bit um it was beautifully animated mm. um gameplay left a little bit to be desired in yep, my opinion yep. but um very pretty looking game um i'm definitely gonna try that out cocoon looks way too smart for me no, I am man. too cocoon, big of an idiot. Cocoon, I feel, was of this entire showcase. That was the one that I was most excited for. This is like Limbo and Inside guy. This is like the premier like icon of indie dev. Yeah. Like the early Xbox indie scene when Limbo came out. Yeah, it but, was like the game to play. But the gameplay looks hard you're like, for my you're stupid like, little brain. You're like going in worlds within worlds and you're it just yeah. oh my god all right we're gonna cruise because we only have you gotta a couple cruise more things whoa long uh i'm into dynasty warriors souls like it kind of looks like uh from team ninja fuck yeah sign me no. up uh all of the persona games uh persona 3 portable p4 gold saw it coming persona 5 royal <laughs> all coming to xbox with p5r coming later this year they did that Mm -hmm. kojima thing uh and then big deep dive into starfield um they're saying a lot of things that's getting me feeling some kind of way andy there's okay so no man's skyrim let's talk about no man's skyrim no man's skyrim the Um, joke that everyone makes yes no man's skyrim i wasn't Um, gonna do it but i had to it's gotta put it out there uh i really wish I could get into this game. It Why is not a game for me. You, Andy, it's not a game for me. It is like so much a game for me. This is everything yes. I wanted Star Citizen to be when I bought it. Like, this is what I pictured Star Citizen to be. <laughs> and I'm loving it. Everything they're saying. I'm I'm all about it. I mean, listen, the idea of exploring a thousand planets. Mm-hmm. Sounds sound it sounds like a lot in a it, good way. There's a mighty task at hand here, mm-hmm. not in like a in a concerned trolley way, but like those planets, I would hope, feel unique in so, in their own way. Yeah, that's I think that if you can lock that down, where like each planet feels distinct. Yeah, and I'm not just gonna go there for resources and then leave that's that's the magic yeah in this game i think the big thing to remember here is this is the skyrim team that has not put out a game since skyrim in 2011 correct so by the time this game comes out it will have been 11 and a half to 12 years right yeah right and and even if you want to say like okay they pulled some resources to you know help with the skyrim special edition or the dlc or whatever like this team has been conceptualizing building these planets building these systems for a decade like watching that's why i feel confident 
watch, this. watching this trailer, I can easily see why it was delayed. And not even mm-hmm. from like a technical standpoint, because you know, it's nice seeing a new engine, though it's it looks like a Bethesda game if you're like, oh, I know that's Bethesda. I, I, I see it in this game's DNA and foundation. I know what's going on there. Yeah. Um, not even just like there was a part in the trailer where <laughs> he was shooting a guy in the back. <laughs> he didn't even <laughs> like do anything. He just sat there and ate it. Yeah. Um, so all of that Bethesda baggage, like notwithstanding as to why it was delayed, but just the sheer scope of this project, the a thousand planets, like the whole like you can customize your ship and also fly it. And there's like air combat. Yeah. All of that crap. I can see why it was pushed back into next year. Um, no date. It's still in that nebulous 2023, but you know, it'll, it'll be at least June of next year is like the deadline. Yeah. Yeah. They said all it's these sure games coming out first half of next year. All these games are within the next year. Yeah. Per Microsoft. So at least we know that the first that the last half of this year and the first half of last year are mightily stacked yeah. with some phenomenal indie games. Game Pass looks sexier than ever. This was the Game Pass show, as far as yeah. I'm concerned. And um, you know, not a huge, not a when I was watching this, like it was hard to tell that it was a Microsoft conference. You know what I mean? Like sure. it, didn't, it didn't feel like it was a lot of them. I, I think part of that, too, is that this is the first... Which isn't a problem. Yeah. Yeah. This is the first combined conference, or I guess the second combined conference we've had right. with Bethesda. Mm-hmm. So it's they don't, like, totally feel part of the team yet, I guess. Right. Uh, they're still kind of, like, integrating there. Um, right. The Diablo news was like, yeah, this is kind of first party if this acquisition actually goes through kind of thing. like Right, right, right. It's... You know, uh. Yeah, and then we had like there was a Call of Duty reveal that I wonder why it wasn't a part of this showcase. Yeah. Also kind of also kind of strange. Mm-hmm. So it's odd, but again, when watching it, like if you had tuned in and tuned out at any point, I feel like you wouldn't have guessed there was a Microsoft convent uh, conference. Yeah, there were some bits like okay, there's Minecraft, there's Forza. Mm-hmm. Those were the only like two like identifying Microsoft bits in this whole yeah. show, which again I think a lot of great indie games carried the showcase. Um, you know, Game Pass, if you weren't convinced before, <laughs> it, what, are you, what are you waiting for? Yeah. Like, you know, it's it's I, a thing now. It's a thing. Yeah. I think the best thing that they did um, with this, though, is they took the Bethesda approach of their last mm. couple of showcases mm. um, and said, everything that you're saying is coming out in the next year. Because that was always Bethesda's shtick, right? You'd get that, Pete Hines yeah. come up there and say, hey, we're super excited to show you the stuff that we're putting out in the next 12 months. And then they'd show you fucking Wolfenstein and Doom and you'd be excited, yeah. you know? I hope that they learn from this because mm-hmm. it's, listen, Sony... I don't want to draw comparisons too much here because it's two different animals altogether, what they're trying to accomplish. But Sony doesn't show their hand at all. They're highly secretive. So when they announce something or show something, it has more of an impact. Yeah. Microsoft has a, as far as I believe last year goes, a like a through 2024 roadmap. Mm -hmm. And that's, a lot of uh, all the stuff you want to see is not being shown. Yeah, that, that's the thing that I said in our reaction right. is Microsoft now has the ability to do this. We're just showing you what's coming out in the next 12 months yeah. and have a shit ton of stuff to show mm-hmm. from all of their first party studios. And mm-hmm. it never feels like we have to like hurry and push something out the door from Naughty right. Dog, like a, a Last of Us remake or yeah. or something like that to have something to show. You know, like they right. can continue to tap into their first party developers and give them time. Andy, we're running a little short on time, so I'm going to have are. you... Um, actually, I will introduce the hype zone. I'm very excited about this. We talked about Bethesda. From the brilliant mind behind Morrowind, Fallout 3, Oblivion, Skyrim, Skyrim Special Edition, Skyrim VR, Fallout 4, Skyrim for the Amazon Alexa, and Skyrim Anniversary Edition. Todd Howard has revealed that Fallout 5 is coming after the Elder Scrolls 6. Guys. Huge news. We did it. You know, it's over. 
it is fucking over. Todd Howard <laughs> wins video games. Congratulations. Thank you all so much for joining us this week <laughs> on Crossplay Podcast. If you want to follow along, you can follow us on Twitter at dual underscore screens or join our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash DS podcasts. Uh, you can also follow us on YouTube and Twitch, dual screen streams on Twitch, dual screens TV on YouTube. Uh, I am at it's purger. Andy is at pants guy. You can also support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash dual screens. Until next time. Bye. Some games. <laughs> Buy some video games. Bye. 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 Cool.